everyone, welcome to episode number 7 of Be Positive with Bali. Now before we get started, the YouTubers ritual as usual, smash the subscribe button and click on the share icon. Now without wasting any more time, I'm going to be introducing our guest for this dialogue session. She's a very talented DJ and a successful entrepreneur. I'm speaking about Rimka. Let the dialogue session begin. Hi Rimka, how are you? I'm great, thanks. First of all, thank you so much for doing this. And uh, it means so much to me. And uh, you have, you know, joined the entire journey with me. And uh, you're not only uh, just a guest, but I've known you for so long. And seeing you become a I great feel DJ. Like a kid. Yeah, I know. So seeing you become a very good, popular DJ uh, is so, uh, I mean, I'm really happy for you. So oh, now, thank you. now, Rimka, let's just cut to the chase. Let's start with the first question. How long has it been since you started DJ? Um, I think it's been about four to five years now. Okay. Um, it's been a good four or five years, yeah. Okay, so how did your interest uh, in music begin? Um, I think it started... Basically, I mean, I've always loved music and yeah. I've always loved um, listening to world music and, you know, different kinds of genres. I've never really had like a fixed genre. Okay. And um, I think it started since I was a kid and then it just, you know, evolved over the years. And then, you know, going to Paris, I was more into electronic music at the time because that was like a trend then. And yeah, I mean, I think that's where it kind of really stemmed the DJing part of it, at least. Okay. So, besides DJing, you know, mm. usually a lot of DJs uh, I have known, they mm. also know how to play an instrument. Are you a person who knows how to play an instrument as well? <laughs> so, funnily enough, I actually um, learned a lot of things when I was younger. Like, I okay. took up um, the guitar, piano, organ, drums, everything. And okay. my parents kept buying me all the instruments, but then they stopped with drums because I kept quitting. So, okay. I know a bit of everything, like the starting basics of everything, but I don't really know fully how to play one instrument. Yeah. Okay. But no, that's fine. That's fine. That's completely fine. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there are DJs as well who do not know how to play any instrument. Or yeah, not, yeah, yeah. Not yeah, a master, that's... but they really excel in this entire uh, music by DJing. So when you speak about DJing, every single DJ, like for me, if I'm an MC, I have someone I look up to who influenced me in my work. Who influences you? Where does your inspiration come from? Hmm. I would say I feel like my inspiration more than people, it comes from the music those people make. Okay. You know, um, I think it's like what they produce because sometimes a lot of DJs or producers, they go through phases. Like there's like some DJs who I love during a certain time and then suddenly they change their sound and then, you know, you don't really connect to that person anymore mm. or something like that. So I'd say I rather follow sounds that inspire me or make right. me feel like, okay, I connect with that sound. So right. definitely, yeah. I think... In that one thing which I, you know, caught my attention when I was watching you on um, social media on Instagram. Okay, so yeah. you were you were were rocking this entire crowd. I don't remember which club was it, but the thing which struck me was you blend the music you were playing into then you straight have a transition to a Bollywood tune. So that was I'm like, whoa! I, I've never heard that before. So that was something which I'm like, okay, this is something fresh. This is great, and I really needed. Uh, you know, I really needed someone who's really strong, who's a woman who is uh, a DJ, not only a DJ, but also an entrepreneur. We'll speak about the entrepreneur part a bit, but I think that really uh, got me hooked on and I'm saying, okay, I got to get you uh, on the dialogue session because, you know, that was something different, right? But then, yeah. um, how many locations have you uh, performed in? I mean, I know that you have performed in the US, um, Indonesia, yeah. Bali, uh, Malaysia yeah. as well. Um, any other... Singapore, other than that. Thailand, uh, India. I've done like Jaipur, okay. uh, Mumbai. Okay. Oh God, I can't even remember now where else I've done. I've done Bangalore. Okay. Um, yeah, I've done a couple of places in India and then right. um, Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, Bali, New yeah. York, uh, places like that. Yeah. Your most favorite place you perform, like the most memorable one. Okay, definitely I'd have to say Bali and India. Okay. Now, 
usually DJs, um, their main, you know, their main goal is to create music. But on top of that, if you have a vocal artist or if you have another artist you can collaborate with, it's something big, right? Who would you yeah. want to collaborate with? So for instance, maybe if you want to collaborate probably with a singer, let's go with a singer. Okay. So with the singer, I mean, for me, okay, with my kind of music, mm -hmm. I would definitely rather, instead of going for like a more popular singer, I would like to go for more folk artists because mm -hmm. that's more my sound. Like I like to mix ethnic fusion or like, you know, different kind of like, maybe I would love to make a song with, you know, uh, famous world music, Mongolian throat. Tibetan or Mongolian, you know, uh, throat singers, you know, I would love to do that, you know, or I would love to go and get a Sufi, you know, singer and then get like all like a Rajasthani folk, you know, vocals recorded right. into my song. So I don't really have like dreams of like working with like popular pop artists or whatever, because that's not something that appeals to me. What appeals to me is, um, you know, bringing culture or mm. ethnic elements into yes. my music because I feel it transports people. And, right. you know, it's just a good feeling and it's just understanding different cultures and basically feeling transported, like right. you're traveling yeah. with the music, you know? Yeah. So that's what I love. I think, I think that's your genre. Uh, your genre, would you classify it as house, uh, deep house, tribal? Because there's so many, right? What so you... many. That is, there is, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you you know your stuff. <laughs> yeah. So um yes, there are many. Um it really sometimes depends also because so what I will always keep with me is the fact that I like to add ethnic elements or you know to my set, right? right. But sometimes you get booked for gigs that you know it depends on the venue because mm. I can't play like deeper, darker techno or like <laughs> melodic techno, right. you know, with ethnic elements. If I get booked at, you know, like a, a rooftop bar, you know, mm. or something that's a little lighter or sundowner set, right? Yeah. I can't be banging techno there, right? You have yeah. to see. So I will always keep that element of like my touch there. But of course, I will play accordingly. Like maybe I'll play deep house, you know, like a more ethnic. When I play at W Hotel, yeah. Um, by the pool usually when there's bigger events I open for a DJ there I will usually play something a bit more Afro house see there's like the ethnic element there like the yeah. Afro element there but I'll go for like et uh, Afro house or I will go for deep house but a bit more like ethnic -y deep house you know so that kind of changes place to place yeah right interesting enough but now in line with uh, be positive it's about positivity um, yeah. Let's let's put you in. Let's let's bring you back to a situation or scenario which you have faced. Um, so, for instance, uh, you have faced a, a challenge, and uh, how did you overcome the challenge? Like a, just generally, like a yeah. challenge. Maybe like, let, let's, let's 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 go to one of your challenges in life. So, for instance, throughout your work experience, um, you know, often we have daily, I mean, the daily obstacles, or you know, definitely hit into. Uh, a wall yeah. sometimes and how do you actually overcome that uh, can you explain or share any experience you have yeah sure um i think for me if i get into any problems or troubles or you know mm -hmm. conflict um i i'm a very like i overthink a lot right. so that's a major issue with me which now i've learned to not overthink to count till 10 to relax to not react immediately i think right. my problem always was like i was very fast to react right? right but now i think i've learned patience and like just taking a step back to analyze everything fully and just take my time with things so right. you know i think that also meditation uh, really has helped me um, I meditate every day for like at least oh. 10 to 15 minutes, okay. which I think, I mean, I never used to think this was something that was at all helpful. I mean, right. I used to always, you know, my friends were a little more like hippie. <laughs> I used to be like, <laughs> guys, I don't know what you're on about, you know, right. I don't know, y'all are just, you know, weird or whatever, but no, it really does help. Meditation, I think, uh, you know, um, basically taking that space when an event happens or conflict happens, just taking that space from it right. to analyze it and just calm down and then you react so much better. And I think that really has helped me solve a lot more things in a much better and productive way. I think, I think that's, that's quite a good advice. I think that's quite a good approach because uh, meditation, uh, you know, connecting to uh, and to pray 
uh, I think that you know gives a lot of answers to it. And then at the same time, uh, don't overthink and relax because I sometimes also have the tendency of just overthinking a lot of things. Ah. And so sometimes <laughs> I just have to stop. I'm like, okay, stop. Don't, don't, don't. Um, you know, focus on what you can control. Don't focus on things exactly. which you cannot control. Right exactly. now. Okay, fun question. Now, fun question time. If you had um, to eat one food for the rest of your life, one, one type of meal, one type of food, for the rest of your life, what would it be? Okay, it's my mom's sambal prawn patai. <laughs> oh, that's she a good one. Sambal prawn patai ever. I mean, if you love patai, but like yeah. I love my mom. Yeah. So. No, yeah. I, mean, I mean, okay, wait. I've... I've I've tried sambal uh, patai. I've tried okay. sambal uh, ikan bilis and patai. But sambal prawn patai. Hmm. You've never had patai, like a prawn sambal with patai? Okay, no. Uh, that means you're mixing the patai with the sambal? Or is <laughs> it this side? No, no, no. It's not like a, no, no. It's not like a hybrid of a prawn and a patai put together. It's like prawn sambal with I mean, it's a prawn. Okay, sambal. okay, okay. No, because usually, sambal. usually, usually, what what my wife does is that she cooks the uh, you know ikan bilis and the patai together with the sambal, so it becomes like a you know it's a, it, it becomes a mash. So I've I've got to try prawn and patai. Well, you got to try. I mean, yeah, but okay. the way my mom, you know, a lot of people like to have their patai a bit crunchy, but right. hers is not so crunchy. It's like the bigger patai. You know, yeah. it's like my tan side of the family. Okay. So she got some like recipe which has been passed down from like this right. grandma in Thailand. Oh, I'm it's so hungry. I am <laughs> so, so hungry right now. But now, okay, <laughs> let's move on to the next question, shall we? Okay, the yeah. next question is about your uh, being an entrepreneur. I mean, besides DJ, you also are an entrepreneur and you have two brands. Um, do you want to uh, share your work on you know, those two brands? Yeah, sure. Um, so, one brand is Unveil. It's uh, basically we have bridal and non-bridal uh, Indian wear uh, for people who are attending weddings or you know events or you know bridal wear. Basically, mm-hmm. um, it's we do it on rental because like when we started it, there was no rental mm-hmm. service for you know lengas yeah, like to anarchalis. There were none, yeah. and me and my partner we thought you know it's something that's expensive and people right. only wear once most of the time. Correct. So if we created yeah a rental service for it, a lot of people would rather save instead of spending thousands on it. Yeah. And you know you don't want to repeat it. I mean how we all know. I mean we're Punjabis. We have weddings all the time and then yeah. if you wear that one and then you meet all the same people again you'll wait at least a couple of months before you wear that again you know yeah. or sometimes even a year or two so mm-hmm. this kind of works because you can just come in and rent it and be done with it and you know not have to worry about it and you know it doesn't take up space in your cupboard and you can continually change your style and the fashion and you don't have to outfit repeat the, so the that's how you, you can custom outfit. make it as well if, let's say someone yes, goes we also in do custom make. We, okay. also, so we also sell but I mean, our primary thing that we do is rentals. Okay, but so for instance, important. for instance, like Sorry? someone is going to rent, right? And but there's some parts maybe loose or, or you know, do you do adjustments for oh, that? Or yes, no? yes. So basically, we alter and dry clean it for them okay. before and after for free. Okay. So all they have to do is pick up and drop off the piece. The alteration is honest. The dry cleaning is honest. They get to keep the piece for three days. And the only thing is we take a security deposit of 500 ringgit, which will return to you when you return the piece. Okay. So that's it. Okay. Yeah, and our ranges start from 150 ringgit for rent all the way till 1,005. Those are for the heavy bridal pieces and all. Okay. So, yeah. And that's one of and the brands. And, and thank you so much. Brands, yeah. Because you know why? I'm, I'm definitely going to take note of this and I will approach you guys and I will put all these details at the description. So uh, to those who are watching, you will get to, you know, check the link out and get to see all the designs and go to the, you have a physical store for this? Yes. Yes, we do. Um, okay. We're based in Infinity Tower. It's right beside Paradigm Mall. So okay. it's so, a BG Manajaya area. Okay. So that's one of the brands. And what, what, yes. what about the other one? So the other brand is called Immigrant mm-hmm. and um, it's basically a modern wear brand, mm-hmm. but it's, I take different countries, ethnic fabrics and I make it into modern outfits. Wow. So it's kind of like, this is kind of like my identity in a sense that I love to add ethnic elements into 
a modern world, basically with my music, you know, electronic music with ethnic elements, same with fashion. I really love it because I love rich fabrics that are colorful and I love patterns and I love prints. I mean, yeah, so that's kind of like my identity and I... And I, I have a partner for that as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's been great. And right now, it's just a little on pause because the new collection was supposed to be done. Yeah. But the factories in India and stuff where we get it manufactured, you know, everything's kind of shut right now because of COVID and all these things. So it's just a little delay for the next collection. But that's still a brand that's up and running. We still do have stuff from our previous collection still available. Yeah. So, yeah that's basically what it's about and the concept of it is kind of to show the world that you know we are all immigrants you know yeah. we all are immigrants at the end of the day you know True. so it's kind of taking a negative word and bringing it into positive light mm -hmm. and kind of saying that you know all world's borders are coming down and kind of fusing fusing fashion you know and culture together and like modern with like the traditional and that kind of a thing okay no, interesting enough, you said that because I always, you know, check you out on Instagram and I always wondered how many clothes does she has, how big her wardrobe is sometimes because she has so many clothes. So now I finally put one plus one. Okay, yes, I know it's two and I know where, where she gets all the wardrobe and where her entire design <laughs> comes in and you, you design yourself. But at the same time, I also want to pass this message to you, um, you know, with this entire pandemic, I think, um, take this as a sign, maybe, you know what, you can actually add more collection when, uh, you know, this entire borders are open and you, know, you yeah. get more designs for immigrant and I can check it out. So make sure you make something which is double XL. So, you know, <laughs> I don't know if you have something. Or maybe this pandemic is going to make you from double XL to like L and then no, no, you're no. going to, who knows? I, I'm, try <laughs> Anything I'm, trying, can happen I'm trying, I'm trying my level best. Okay, now, um, what would your advice be for everyone uh, who's watching uh, if they want to become a DJ or an entrepreneur like yourself? You know, because, you know, it's two different worlds, being a DJ, yeah. an entertainer, and then an entrepreneur. But I think that that's something really brilliant and beautiful, right? So yeah. what would your advice be? So I think it's different for like DJing. I would advise people to definitely do it for the right reasons, you right. know, because right now it's so saturated and like everyone wants to be a DJ or everyone yeah. wants to be the limelight. Right. But it really takes a lot of effort because DJing is not, you can just go learn how to use a CDJ, yeah. but it's so much more than that. It's about digging tunes that people haven't heard of. It's about finding, you know, um, unique ways to blend them together, fusing different genres together or being really good at mixing that it's so smooth that people don't realize that you've transitioned into the next song. There's so many things. There's DJ etiquette where like when you're booked, you know, even if you're booked for warm up slot, you're not supposed supposed to be banging hardcore music you're supposed to warm the floor so that the main dj can take over and a lot of young djs ego they don't know these things right. and they think that no i just want to be a famous dj and then they are they're booked for the warm-up slot and they screw it up and then they never get booked again because it's basically you know, a code of conduct right it's just it's just yeah, yeah. it's just it's just, it's, yeah. it's just how yeah, you have to be ethical about it, it. Yeah. yeah, so all these things, so a lot of new DJs just come in because they're like, I want to be a DJ, I want to be popular, I want to be famous as well, but it's the wrong reasons. You got to love the music, you got to love what you do, you got to put in the time to get better at it because it's a craft. It's just like learning an instrument. The CDJ is like an instrument and you got to keep practicing. So yeah. that's one thing I would say for DJing, for, you know, for entrepreneurs, um, you know, I would definitely say set targets and plans and goals because if you don't you can get overwhelmed and you can feel like there's a lot of things happening at once so i exactly. think creating a to-do list uh daily the day before before the next day like the night before write a to-do list like this is what i gotta do so i gotta accomplish and create like quarterly goals where like you know every three months three months or something like that or four months you write down you know this is the few things i want to achieve in this amount of months mm -hmm. and you make sure you complete them because i think that's very important very yeah. true no, because that's that's exactly um, how I how I you know list down my task as well. So, but I I work in a different uh, you know recipe altogether. So what I do is that I, if I want to achieve something, I'm like, okay, I want to do this. So what I have is like a reward system. So if, if I've done this, 
So I'll reward myself with this. So that's good. <laughs> I think that's how I go to it. But uh, sadly, this whole year I've not rewarded myself with anything. If you know what I mean. But now, <laughs> but now, uh, last and final question before uh, we say goodbye. Yeah. What is next for Rimka? Um, what's next? So right now, with this pandemic, it's really a question mark. But if I don't think about the pandemic, definitely producing more music, releasing more tracks, um, playing more internationally, and just, I guess, building my name as an artist now, because this is my first EP that is coming out on 31st oh, yes. July. Yes, yeah. congratulations and on that in advance. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so that's basically, I think, you know something that I want to do build myself as an artist now now that I've actually started producing so I'm not just a DJ I'm also an artist so mm -hmm. that's I want to produce more and of course with Immigrant and Unveil keep growing it you know and doing my new collection for Immigrant basically that I would say All right. but just hopefully this pandemic gets done and every everyone's plans you know goes back on track mm -hmm. So what's going to happen is that I will put all your links from your social media yeah. links, from your DJ links uh, on to the description. So guys, you guys can go and check out uh, Rimka's um, social media spaces and uh, wait for her first uh, EP launching on 31st of July. And what is the title of the EP? It's called Budaya. Budaya, wow. Local. Yeah, because I used Malaysian. that Kompang. I used Kompang and Saruleng in it. Um, wow. Electronic Interesting. music. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I can't uh, You can link that down below, so I'll send you the link for it. Fantastic. So I'll definitely go and check it out. And please, um, guys, do support the local talent. Do support your local artists. I think uh, someone, artists like Rimka, definitely needs your support. And Rimka, before, um, so before we say goodbye, uh, what would be your message for everyone who's watching um, thank you so much for watching. Bali has always been a live wire MC, and now I'm glad that he has taken this opportunity, you know, to use this time during the pandemic to do something that takes a lot of effort, to be honest, because I know social media and making YouTube channels and YouTube videos, it's a lot of effort. So, so easy. The amount of things. Yeah, kudos to you because it, it takes a lot of like um like you gotta be really into it to want to do it because it, every day you got to think of content or like you know yeah. you've got to plan it out and you have to be consistent yes right. consistent is what i was looking for so being consistent is tough to be honest so i mean bravo to you that you you know are doing this or, so even much. though everyone's taking it to chill you have done something else so yeah that's great subscribe to bali and do check out my links and yeah i hope to see y'all somewhere in the world um, either on the dance floor or either in my boutique <laughs> thank you okay so rimka before we say goodbye um, our, our food partner, so Be Positive, has uh, four partners. So one of the partners, uh, Desi Tarka, will be sending you some love uh, in the form of meal. And uh, they, will keep in, they will get in touch with you and uh, you can choose from what the menu would be. And do enjoy if they have a five-generation recipe. And enjoy Desi Tarka. And thank you so much, Rimka, for being on this dialogue session with me. And I'm only sending you good good vibes, always good thank vibes you, and well wishes. And uh, God bless you. Thank you so much. And thank stay you. positive always. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank bye. you. Bye. So if you ever wondered a person could be a DJ and also a business person, now you know that's Rimka for you. Thank you, Rimka, for joining on episode number seven, sending you good vibes and wishing you all the very best on your EP and keep on entertaining all of us and also inspire us to make a different, different style of businesses as well. Now, before we say goodbye, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and the share icon is right over there. You can share it with your family, your loved ones and your friends. And also big shout out to my content partner, Be Strategic, Digital Artwork, DH Creation, Food by Desi Tarka, video live streaming post-production by Mozak Production. And this was episode number seven. I will see you on episode number eight with another guest of mine. Thank you. Bye-bye.